Audiobook title, Mix Audiobook Collection 150. System vs. Rebirth. Chapter 760 Progress. The second limitation is the spirit link. Even though I said that this ability could create a spirit link, it would it be possible if your body did it of a spirit link in the first place? You could say that your body had to understand the spirit link first before being able to attempt this. Anna was stupefied. The requirement was extremely hard. There might be some humans that could reach this level, but each kingdom wouldn't have more than five people. It was no wonder why old Rue taught them without any care. Still, how do you know our conversion rate in the spirit link? I simply read your spiritual energy frequency. Old you smiled while adding inwardly, the girl is extremely dangerous 95% conversion rate and a spirit link. It seems that her spirit link is extremely solid as well. Her talent is above my grandson, who only has a 90% conversion rate and a spirit link. However, the terrifying one is Noel. He has a conversion rate of 100%. There is a spirit link in his body, but it feels like half completed. I have never encountered an incomplete spirit link, but if I have to guess, it seems that this spirit link is completed. The only reason why it looks incomplete is because there is another spirit residing in his body. In addition, that spirit is taking precisely half of his body, meaning that spirit also has a 100% conversion rate. In other words, Noel has two spirits with a 100% conversion rate and potentially two spirit links. His name will surely go down in history. Old Rue didn't know that if he did it to Vodagon, he couldn't get this opportunity. However, Old Rue also noticed the speed of his growth. It was less than Anna, but the more time passed, the more refined his ability became. Old Rue didn't know that Noel had yet to complete the training task, which would allow him to be more sensitive to energy, increasing his training speed further. If he knew about it, he would probably expel him from here, unable to take it in his heart. Now that I have managed to do it, what should I do? Anna asked while pointing to his other hand. Should I do two at the same time? Yes. You will have to reach the full body eventually. So, it's better for you to start early. Anna nodded without hesitation. Although she could wait for Noel here, she didn't hesitate to proceed, completely believing Noel was able to catch up. Of course, Noel had been listening while training. He finally understood the reason for his training which made him more fired up. It was no wonder why he could catch up to Anna in the past life. This ability would definitely play a huge part in it. On top of that, he also planned to get the true spirit body for both spirits. He didn't know what would happen at that time, but this true spirit body would definitely give two different kinds of power, allowing him to make his opponent unable to get used to his power. Noel took a deep breath and continued with his training. After another three hours, Noel managed to cover his hand with this thin layer of skin. I have finished my first task. Noel opened his mouth, showing the result. That's good enough. Old Rue nodded after observing the outer layer. He glanced to the sky and said, There are about two more hours before sunset. You can continue if you want. Since you've succeeded, you should be able to do the rest by yourself. I'm going to prepare your food. Thank you, Old Rue. Noel politely bowed. There was no obligation for Old Rue to accept them, yet, he actually did so much for them. He didn't know how to thank him. It's fine. If you want to thank me, do me a favor before you depart. That's enough. Old Rue waved his hand with a smile. I understand. Noel nodded. After Old Rue returned to the cabin, Noel took a peek at Anna's progress. As expected of Anna, she managed to cover both shoulders already. It seemed that once she knew the trick, she could proceed at a far faster speed. If this continued, she would have cleared the first hurdle which was to envelop the whole body with this layer of spiritual energy. And that was where the serious training would begin. Noel only managed to cover an entire right arm after another two hours. His progress might not be as good as Anna, but his pace gradually became faster. After all, this training allowed Noel to actually adapt to his spirit link. He had given him the spirit link, increasing his spiritual energy sensitivity. The training task should also be related to Hisk. And with this training, 
he could finally make full use of it. It was awkward at first, considering the first time he tried it, the surge of energy caused a shock wave and knocked him down. But the more he used it, the higher his mastery became. If this continued, he should be able to catch up to Anna within three to four days. H-U-U. Noel took a deep breath, feeling a bit exhausted. How is it? It seems that you've made good progress. Anna smiled, checking his condition. Yeah. However, I'm not going to lose against you. Noel smirked. Is that so? I won't be pulling my punch, you know. Haha. <laughs> we can decide once we go back to our room. Maybe I will hinder you. Noel had a mischievous grin on his face. How about a bet? Oh. Interesting. The loser will have to say one line that the other party wanted. Huh? One line? Noel tilted his head in confusion. The bet looked small at first glance, but he soon realized that she could force Anna to say she loved females to Nicole, causing a ruckus among the Stargaze family. It seemed that the bet wasn't that small either. Noel and Anna grinned, feeling excited. We have a deal. Weapon seller in the world of magic. Chapter 424 Lan Jing Bai and Shang Wen at Empty Lan. Roughly around 10 o'clock, Shang Wen and Lan Jing Bai made it to Empty Lan. Lan Jing Bai asked him to stay at the foot of the mountain as she intended to battle against the Zeng to get back a daughter, but as the second prince insisted on following her due to worry about her safety, she decided to knock him out in case of an emergency. Amara, the giant flying stingray, the Emperor's Mount, made its way to the top of the mountain. There, they have the Zeng waiting in its original form. Looking at the five-tailed scarlet leopard, the six-circle realm flying stingray was frightened and refused to make its landing. But then, as the Zeng spoke to it in a human tongue, not wanting to see Lan Jingai getting carried by Shang when if the latter was a stepson, the king great beast reluctantly landed on the mountain but made sure to avoid the Zeng's gaze. Meanwhile, Shang Wen turned wary of the Beast Emperor. He felt like this opponent is far stronger than he imagined. He decided not to battle it but instead put his entire focus on how to quickly grab his mother and fly away without caring about Amara. Welcome to my abode, Lan Jingai, and Shang Wen, greeted the Zeng. Lan Jingai responded with a question, where is my daughter, Lan Zhu? The Zeng calmly replied, first, pay your respects to your parents. Then, we shall talk. Lan Jingai started walking toward a gravesite. Just as Shang Wen was about to follow, the Zeng looked at him, not you, Shang Wen. Outsiders aren't allowed in that sacred place. He is my son, Lan Zhu, said Lan Jingai without bothering to hide her anger. The Zeng shook his head, but, he still doesn't have any ties with the Lang sect. And neither had he any relations with the dead. He is an outsider in my view. You should be satisfied with the fact that I allowed your husband's mount and his son into this premises. Lan Ju also didn't hide his disgust as he looked at Shang Wen in the beast. He doesn't like the imperial family, for whom Lan Jingai chose to betray the wishes of her father. You? Shang Wen clenched his fist but he controlled his emotions, knowing well that he is no match for the beast. Lan Jingai told him to wait as she walked away. Once Lan Jingai was out of sight, the Zeng then sat down in silence and closed his eyes. Shang Wen also kept his mouth shut for a while until he couldn't bear it anymore and said, I don't sense my sister anywhere on this mountain. I guess it must be behind the human who is helping you. The Zeng ignored his words and continued his nap. Shang Wen then spoke, on our way, I had a lot of time to think about your intentions behind this act. My mother is immortal. My sister is too young and my brother has already awakened the phoenix bloodline. He would probably become the emperor someday. So, I highly doubt you want to use them to revive your fallen sect. So, what is it that you are truly after? Lan Ju continued to play deaf as if he didn't hear him. But, Shang Wen didn't back down. He continued with his theory to confirm his suspicions. I had this friend of mine. You can say he is like a brother and I don't have any reason to distrust his words. He says that the gold dragon of the Wuji sect has aligned itself with Feng Wu. He also said that Feng Wu had contracted with this powerful demon, which was the one that attacked us and killed the Grand Secretariat. Now, 
You took this opportunity and abducted Shang Zhao. A powerful beast like you doesn't need to work with a human unless he she is your contractor. And you don't accept just anyone as your partner too. He must be related to this sect and should also have a high cultivation realm. As Shang Wen was speaking out his own theory, something clicked in his head. The gold dragon left Lu Zhen's side after the birthday event of our Ang Zen. And our Ang Zen's prime minister is Lan Jing, my mother's paternal uncle. The Eastern Sun Kingdom has the largest reserves of gold and a long war will bring down our economic conditions, forcing my father to take a loan. Now, everything fits. Lan Jing is the one who is pulling the strings behind this entire situation, isn't he? He has the perfect reason to take revenge. The Imperial Palace didn't send any help to Lung Sect during the dungeon break. In our defense, it is because we lack the strength to face it. But, in his view, we probably have betrayed him. And my mother's marriage to the Emperor has probably escalated his anger. So, he waited for the opportunity to strike us down. The Zen couldn't help but open his eyes and take another look at the second prince. This. It's not because he was surprised about the analysis of the second prince but it is because his master told him the same thing that the Imperial Palace will come to a conclusion. Mark intended to distract everyone's attention away from him by painting Lan Jing as the prime conspirator. Of course, by the time they investigated everything, they will figure out that Lan Jing has no role in this and they have been fooled all along by Mark. But, it will be too late by then. Mark would have already finished his revenge. Seeing the Zeng look at him in surprise, Shang Wen more felt like he was right. Making a serious expression, he said, No matter of what you planned, I want to tell you that I will go to any extent to keep my family safe. If that involves selling my soul to a more powerful demon, I wouldn't hesitate to do so. Interesting. The Zeng finally responded to him, seeing that his master's plan is working. I can sense your sincerity when you said about protecting your family. Answer me, young warrior. What will do if your brothers turn against each other? Or if your mother or your sister turns against you? Shang Wen's face darkened. He didn't give an answer but instead asked him, What are you planning to do? Come back and ask me the same question when you were qualified to have a conversation with me, Wickling, replied the Zeng before he closed his eyes once again. Shang Wen's pride was hurt by the Zeng but he could only clench his fist and stay silent. Not just because of the difference in their strength but it is also because of the fact that Lan Jingai was still on the premises of the mountain and Shang Zhao's fate was at stake here. Meanwhile, at Imperial Palace, in the Emperor's chamber, Shang Fu was anxiously waiting for a message from his son. He was so concerned about the situation at MT Land that he refused all the requests for a meeting from various sect heads and clan lords to discuss the situation about the war as he was regretting not establishing a two-way communication talisman between him and his son, his thoughts were interrupted by his third son. Your Majesty, sorry for the disturbance but there is someone here to meet you, said the third prince while standing outside of the room. Shang Fu waved his hand, I'm not in the mood to talk right now, Shang Wei. I will meet the guest in the evening. Your Majesty, he is a supreme being, said the prince gaining his attention immediately. Eh? Walker of the Worlds. Chapter 1741 Anxious Counter. Whoosh. But while they were talking, several energy fluctuations could be felt coming from the front. Seems like they've found us, Lin Mu said his expression turning serious. In the distance, the pair of man and woman were preparing something. The woman had six talismans floating in front of her in the shape of a pentagon. Nine talismanic art. Canon form. She chanted, several runes forming with her hand seals. The runes condensed into an orb in the center of the pentagon. The orb attached to the talisman in the center of the pentagon, as power started to condense in it. With me, senior brother. The third tribulation stage immortal woman said before activating the talismanic formation. Fire. Boom. In the next moment. A loud explosion was heard as a mix of blue and white light shot out. The lights transformed into a large cannonball that now looked like a streaking meteor. Just a minute ago there was a red comet and now a blue and white meteor was flying in the sky. 
but that wasn't all as the fourth tribulation stage immortal man also attacked. He put his glass sword back, before thrusting with it in a straight line. Serene light thrust. An iridescent sword light flew out from the sword, accompanying the cannonball. The two intertwined and spun together, as if resonating with each other. The combined power of the two attacks was not as small as could be seen from the expressions of the two immortals. Both the fourth tribulation stage immortal man and his junior sister looked to be exhausted. Their immortal key fluctuations had also reduced by quite a lot showing that they had expended a lot of energy. This is to work, unknown to others, the woman was quite anxious. The reason behind it was the disappearance of the sky soul that she had frozen. The first thing that made her surprised was its sudden disappearance without her knowing it. Her senior brother hadn't sensed it either. The second thing that shocked her was the quick dispelling of her skill. That once someone is encased in the ice, even senior brother would take a few minutes to break it. And yet, that person was able to dispel it in just a few seconds, this had also made her quite nervous. It made her think that the beast had just disappeared on its own. Someone had actually taken it away. But if someone can do that, it meant they were just a few meters from us. And we couldn't sense it at all. If they attacked at that time, we might have been wiped out. They are very strong, if they can do this, the woman had grasped. Having thought of all this, she decided to go all out and got her senior brother to join her as well. I don't know if we'll be able to survive for long, but getting this far might still be enough to satisfy the elders, the senior brother thought. They had their own goals for coming here and it was their luck that the two of them had ended up together in the spatial plane. The Serene Glass Valley has to reach at least the quarterfinals this time. If not us, hopefully, other members can do it, the senior brother thought to himself. The valley needs to have better results this time, at least the nobles should notice us again. Several powers and competitors had the same goal in the tournament. To gain recognition and to improve their reputation. To some the rewards of the tournament didn't matter as much as the recognition of the others did. After all, the latter could bring them long-term benefits in the form of collaborations as well as various deals. Some powers use the tournament to display the various services they could provide by letting their members use those skills in the tournament. For example and power providing formations would let their members display various formations in the tournament, allowing the audience to notice it. The nobles who were looking for such services would certainly take a note and would contact them at a later time. In fact this was a well-known thing, and the nobles specifically had people assigned to gathering this information. Someone even used the tournament as a way to pick prospective brides and grooms for their juniors. After all, what better person to marry than a ranker of the tournament? While the winners would most likely be out of reach, due to them being royalty like the third prince and Yao Changing, the others were still a fair game. The best option for them would be the black horses who had rose to the top. They would be such wild cards that they could change the entire flow of the tournament. These contests would also be the most tempting to the nobles as they would often have no affiliation to other powers. It was the same as getting a strong expert without searching for them. Whatever their goals might be, Lin Mu and his companions didn't care. To them, only coming out on top mattered and their mission to defeat two individuals was important. And there was no way, Lin Mu was going to let it be spoiled. This is a lot more stronger than the previous attack. It's very fast too, Lin Mu sensed the incoming combo skill. It had barely been a second and it had already traveled half the distance. Lin Mu glanced at the Ming sisters and knew that they wouldn't be able to dodge this in time even if he could. He thought about pulling them along with him, but without little Shabi they might still get caught up in the attack. Lin Mu wasn't worried about getting defeated, but he couldn't say the same about the two. Ming Aeolian, Ming Dendon. Behind me, now? Lin Mu shouted. The Ming sisters had sensed the incoming attack as well and knew that it was too late to dodge it. They did as Lin Mu told and got behind him. Lin Mu meanwhile, brought his hands forward in a brace position. Dragonmonic System. Chapter 392-392, Belthorus the Devouring Shade. A Detire. A Dittire Alicia panicked seeing a Dittire in such a horrible state. A Dittire groaned in pain and then replied. I am not planning on dying this soon. 
at least not until I give you a dragon baby. This isn't the time to joke. Normally Alicia would have blushed to hear such words. But this wasn't time for such nonsense. Open your mouth. She took out a glass tube that was filled with a green liquid. The green liquid was peak 5 star healing potion. Julie had given Alicia a few of them for emergency situations. Never thought she would find herself needing to use one of them. Exclamation point. As the potion reached down his throat, all of his injuries rapidly began to heal. Alicia then took a moment to look around. Everything within 25 meters radius was completely destroyed. She could sense many people were on the verge of death. One of them happens to be the Prime Minister of the Hephaestus Kingdom. Adian gently put Fabian on the ground. He held his hand and gently asked. Fabian, talk to me. Fabian had used this body to protect Adian. Unlike a detire, he wasn't that lucky. His body wasn't strong enough to withstand the explosion. Your Majesty, this is the end. I pray that one day, the Hephaestus Kingdom regains its former glory and reaches a new height. Fabian's hand lost strength and was about to fall down when Adian grabbed his hand and tightly held it with tears running down his cheeks. Thank you for your years of service, my dear Prime Minister. Adian had great difficulty speaking these words. He never thought that his Prime Minister would leave him this way. Fabian had served Adian's father for a long time. After his father's death, even when everything went wrong, Fabian was loyal to Adian and served him. Pushing the debris, Daxton stood up and removed the jacket that he was wearing. Daxton being a fifth order cultivator was able to survive the explosion even though he was slightly injured. He also managed to protect his Prime Minister. Adam also managed to survive. Are you alright, your majesty? Adam asked. Daxton rolled his eyes and replied. Before asking, you should look at yourself. Adam sadly smiled before looking to his right. It appears Duke Elliot Campbell wasn't that lucky. Duke Campbell instantly died from the explosion. Never thought that this old man would go out this way. Even though the Honored House and the Campbell were bitter rivals for generations, Adam never really hated Duke Elliot. Duke Elliot was from Adam's father's generation. He greatly respected the old man. It's a shame that he died early. As his son is still immature and not ready to handle the duties of his father, Adam's body began healing after he ate a five-star healing pill that his daughter made for him. Daxton's injuries weren't that serious. With his natural healing abilities, those burns will heal in no time. Dash. Dash. Jonathan, are you still alive? Lying under the debris of the wooden house, the Emperor of Queenstown called his friend. Although Eric had hidden many things from Jonathan, he still considered Jonathan a good friend. Pushing away the wooden dune, Jonathan showed his pained face. His forehead was covered in blood. The rest of his body had suffered second-degree burns. Yeah. Eric was lying injured on the ground. He saw his friend Jonathan was still alive. Feeling relieved, Eric got up to help Jonathan. What the hell was that? Lucas should have warned us about whatever he was planning on doing in this meeting. Eric complained about Lucas while helping Jonathan sit up not knowing that the devil was behind them and was listening to their conversation. I don't want to be part of this shitty alliance anymore, Jonathan complained. If Jonathan wasn't a part of this alliance, he wouldn't have been forced into this war and wouldn't have lost millions of his soldiers. And he wouldn't have been this miserable. Yeah. After all this is over, I am leaving this alliance. The only party benefiting from this alliance is Lucas and his empire. Are you sure about that? A hideous voice reached both Eric and Jonathan's ears. Both of their backs stiffened. Both emperors started trembling. When they slowly turned their heads, they saw a monster in front of their eyes. This monster did it of any resemblance to Lucas. Who are you? The monster in front of them was three meters tall. It had dark skin, large black bat wings, black eyes, and two sharp horns on its head. The most notable feature of its body was the dark purple colored diamond shaped crystal at its chest. The diamond shaped crystal was in the middle of his chest. The crystal was embedded into his ribcage. Dark purple veins were spread from the crystal. Each second, the crystal was pulsing, as if it was alive. The monster in front of them looked very ugly. To them, 
It was like a creature that had walked out of hell. Neither Eric nor Jonathan had ever seen anything uglier than this creature. Even the ugliest being in this world would look pretty in front of this monster. The monster had a sinister aura. Being stared at by this monster, made both of them feel extremely nervous. As if this creature from hell had come here to take them to hell. Who am I? That's a stupid question. Just a few seconds ago, you two were talking about betraying me. It was then that both Eric and Jonathan realized that this monster was none other than Lucas. As for how the Echo Nexus Emperor turned into this hideous looking monster, they had no idea about it. You're Lucas. The monster's giant palms grabbed their faces. Lucas, please don't kill us. For decades, we have been loyal to you and only you. We stood by your side and have helped you. We have served and we will have service to the Alliance leader. Lucas momentarily stopped before looking at Eric and Jonathan's faces. Unfortunately, it's too late for that. Ah. Eric and Jonathan's bodies started to wither. Both of them struggled with all of their rights to free themselves but failed to do anything. Lucas raised their bodies up in the air. Wrinkles started appearing on their bodies. It was as if both of their bodies were rapidly aging. A second later, both of their bodies stopped moving. Exclamation point. I barely received anything. What a waste these two were. Lucas threw away the two dead bodies like garbage. Eric and Jonathan's bodies had turned withered corpses. Both looked like thousand years old mummies. It was as if someone had extracted every single drop of blood and water from their bodies. Time to hunt for some more meals. Lucas then disappeared. Dash. Dash. How are you doing? Are you alright? Are you still in pain? Aditya just nodded his head. Thanks to Alicia's quick actions, his injuries had 40% healed. Within a few more minutes, his body should be completely healed. Seeing Aditya trying to stand up, Alicia healed him. After standing up, both of them took a moment to look at the destruction around them. Just a few hours ago, this peaceful village was covered in snow and beautiful houses were around them. But now anything within 25 meters range has been destroyed due to the explosion. With his enhanced senses, he could feel that many people had died in this explosion. If he had it acted even a second later, then Alicia also would have died. And that very thought of her dying scared him very much. A detire. Yeah, I can also feel its presence. There is no way I won't be able to feel his hideous and sinister aura. Both of them were talking about the monster responsible for this destruction. How did Lucas suddenly turn into that monster? Aditya wondered out loud. Alicia heard Aditya's question. But before she could say anything, her eyes suddenly became dazed and lost focus. It was almost as if she was lost in her thoughts. Dash. Dash. Let us escape this prison. I can't wait to return to Earth and conquer the seven continents once again. Alicia suddenly found herself having a vision. In her vision, she saw millions of black humanoid-looking monsters with large bat wings and horns on top of their heads, in a place where lava was flowing in place of a river, and where the sky was red. It was a different world. No ordinary human would be able to survive in such a place. All of these monsters were locked in cages. Amidst all the screaming and shouting, suddenly a wave of golden flame came from the sky. It's over for us. We are finished. All the monsters screamed. The flame then consumed every single one of the monsters. And just like that millions of monsters were killed. What the hell was that the vision lasted for a few seconds. Even though it was a vision, she still remembered many details. That flame looked similar to the hellfire that the members of my family are capable of using, Alicia was a fire major herself. She had been using the hell flame with her cells. Because of the hell flame, any fire type skills that she uses don't consume too much of her mana. But it was much more powerful. Dash. Dash. Alicia, I am going to face this monster. Alicia snapped out of her dazed. Alicia looked concerned. She knew even if she wanted to stop him, he wouldn't listen. And truthfully, only he was strong enough to stop this monster. Take everyone with you and leave this island. This island isn't safe anymore. Once the fight started, the collision of their attacks might even take out the entire island. While fighting this monster, Aditya can't guarantee the safety of his wife and his people. 
All right. Take care of yourself. Aditya nodded before vanishing out of Alicia's sight. With each step, one by one, he started activating his passive skills. He also wore the Crimson Warlock armor set. Inferno Overdrive. Storm Flight. Lightning Armor. Crimson Lightning Dash. 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 Go. When Aditya arrived, he saw a three meters tall monster had lifted a beginner fifth order cultivator by his throat. Under his eyes, the cultivator's body began to wither rapidly. Within a few seconds, the cultivator's corpse withered like a thousand years of mummy. You're finally here. I have been waiting for you. The monster casually threw away the dead body of the cultivator and then turned around. Around the monsters, there were 100 other dead withered corpses. He had killed every single people that came with him to this island. Who are you? No, the question should be what are you? Are you Lucas or a monster? Aditya's main objective was to buy time. So that Alicia can take everyone and leave this island. Aditya would be able to fight without having to worry about others. That's an interesting question. Even I am not sure about the answer. I am still Lucas. But I am also Belthos the Devouring Shade. Exclamation point. Aditya started to walk around Lucas. What exactly you have turned yourself into? Aditya couldn't help but ask. He did it with any knowledge about the monster that Lucas had turned himself into. I've lived for more than seven centuries. It had taken me seven centuries to build the current Echo Nexus Empire. You might be more powerful than me, but I am more knowledgeable than you. Aditya secretly rolled his eyes. He wanted a straight answer. In my long life, I was fortunate enough to find the corpses of some beings that do not originate from this realm. It took a long time but I finally succeeded. Through numbers trails and errors, I have become. To be continued. Evolution, Starters Hereafter Chapter 229 by I'm Link 229. Guardian Type Mutation. If even Trajan was not a match for the Ice Emperor, then this sea god fruit was of great significance to Rain. What kind of sea god fruit do you have? Rain asked. I want to see it first. We didn't bring it with us. If Governor Rain wants to see it, we will bring it to the designated location in the deep sea. Good. Without delay, Rain immediately left the Governor's mansion with his men and the Naga. After waiting for two days at the designated location, the radar showed that the Naga had arrived. This was a blue sea god fruit, but unlike the usual green sea god fruit, it was surrounded by a faint blue light. Rain could already tell that this sea god fruit was extraordinary. This sea god fruit seemed to be in a different league compared to other rare sea god fruits. You give me the sea god fruit just like this? And you are afraid that I won't keep my promise? Rain asked. Governor Rain, we have been observing you since you entered the King's Sea and we have done our research before deciding to trade with you," Zalada said. There is nothing in this world that is 100% certain. We can only take a gamble now. I do intend to deal with the Ice Emperor, and I am not hiding that fact. But I am not sure if I can save your people. If you kill the Ice Emperor, his blockade will naturally be lifted. As for whether our people are still alive, that will be up to fate. Good, then there is no doubt. Rain extended his hand. Deal. Salada and Rain shook hands. Deal. The appearance of the Naga clan seemed to open a new door for Rain. The closer he got to the core sea, the more unfamiliar this world became. If the Naga clan existed in this world, then would there be other races as well? What kind of opponents would he face in the future? The words of the archaeologist still echoed in Rain's ears. However, Rain was not afraid. Instead, he felt excited about exploring the unknown world. It's better not to let me encounter any mythical level things. I'll kick their ass if they happen to encounter me. Rain boasted. Anyway, let's take a look at the sea god fruit first. Whether we can defeat the ice emperor or not depends on you. Rain first put the sea god fruit into the strengthening room, but to everyone's surprise, this so-called legendary sea god fruit could not be strengthened. What the hell? Isn't it the longer it holds on, the stronger it gets? Rain shook his head. Since the Fire Heaven Crystal could not strengthen it, Rain could only prepare to swallow it directly. Fancy, Unaba, 
and Tuoba stood beside Rain, looking nervous. Captain, the Naga won't poison you, will they? Rain was taken aback for a moment. He thought about it, and the system had already confirmed that it was a sea god fruit and did not indicate any danger, so it should be fine. They won't, Rain said confidently, and then peeled off the outer skin of the sea god fruit and ate it in one bite. After five minutes, ten minutes, and thirty minutes, Rain felt that his body was undergoing some kind of rapid change. After forty-five minutes, Rain had completed the fusion. He immediately summoned the system. Rain, Captain. The body of the son of Poseidon, stage 5 level 1. 1 stroke 10, basic attributes 156 times that of an ordinary person, physical combat power 312, each level in this stage increases by 32 points. Skills, Tiger's Fang, 10 stroke 10, within 10 seconds, speed increases by 200%. Strength increases by 200%, sensing increases by 100%, and reaction speed increases by 50%. Cooldown time. 30 minutes. Mutation count. 4. Detailed classification 1. Combat type biological mutation. Mutation ability. 3 dragon transformation. First transformation. Level 31. Attributes increase by 310% in water and decrease by 15% on land. Second transformation, level 31, a layer of dragon scales can be formed on the surface of the body, which can increase underwater movement speed by 200%, already at the limit, and increase defense by 155 points. Third transformation, level 31, obtain dragon skin and dragon bones. Increase physical defense and hardness, increase unarmed attack power by 155 points, and increase defense by 155 points. Detailed classification 2, support type mutation. Naga's gaze, primary. 20 stroke 30, combi breakthrough. Skill information, under the current level, gaze at the enemy unit for 1 second, causing their entire body to stiffen for 2 seconds. Detailed Classification 3, Material Type Mutation. Flame Transformation, 11 Stroke 20, the body can be transformed into a flame form. The basic attributes had become more and more abnormal. All the previous skill limits had been broken through. Except for Naga's Gaze, which requires additional practice to increase its level, all other skills are synchronized with Rain's level. Of course, the most important thing was the change after the fourth mutation. Detailed Classification 4, Guardian Type Mutation. Guardian Spirit, Naga God, Modern Mermaid God. What is a Guardian Type Mutation? A new species? Rain wondered, Mermaid God is Mermaid God, why and madam? Wouldn't the more ancient the God, the more powerful it is. Divine Guardian, cannot be upgraded, the user gains the Naga Clan's Divine Spirit, the Modern Mermaid God and can use the Dragon Slayer Strike once within 3 months. Dragon Slayer Strike, attack power is 1000 times the user's basic attributes. Not affected by the environment, not affected by transformation, not affected by current combat power, and not affected by other skills of both sides. When used with a weapon, it can produce a sword energy attack. With just one sentence, Rain was stunned. As a result, this sea god fruit did not transform or enhance his attributes, but only gave him a skill, and a skill that cannot be upgraded. However, this skill was a bit too strong. What did attack power is 1000 times the user's basic attributes mean? If it was an ordinary stage 5 level 10 mutant, their basic attributes could reach 100 points. When multiplied by 1000, the attack power of Dragon Slayer Strike could reach 100,000 points. The attacking power of one hurricane anti-ship missile was 10,000 points. The force of this blow was equivalent to 10 hurricane anti-ship missiles. Even the super battleship itself cannot withstand 10 hurricane anti-ship missiles. If Rain's level was maxed out without using any skills, his basic attribute could reach 600 points. If he uses the Dragon Slayer Strike, the attack power could reach 600,000 points. Rain swallowed his saliva. Even if he could only use it once every three months, it didn't matter, 
One attack of 600,000 points was already enough. Holy God, I just want to upgrade my fleet well, why did you make me so strong? Rain was in a state of confusion. If he used this skill, it would truly be another cheating-like existence.